And I learned my tragedy that's happened is to talk about it. My motto was, I'm either going to sink here or I'm going to swim. So thank you so much for coming, Deb. We absolutely love you and we love having you on today. We've wanted to have you on for so long. So it's a long time in the making. It is. Thank you for having me. I feel so (laughs) honoured to be here with you guys. I'm so glad you're here. Now, Deb, Mm -hmm. how do we know each other? Ooh, (laughs) it goes back how many years, Celeste? Probably nearly three. Bria came to you. Yes, your daughter. So your daughter, Bria, was my client. And she said, oh, mum, you've got to come. This is fabulous. Um, You know, hairdresser (laughs) and the girls. And I went, okay, you know, I have to go. And that's when it all started. It did. So I've been seeing you now for, I'd say nearly three years. Yes, nearly. I think it'll be three years at the end of this year. Maybe about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And... I'm not going to lie, you're one of my favourite clients. <laughs> oh, <laughs> beep that bit out. <laughs> true, true, true. true. Oh. Edit that out. Um, and you know how much I love you. <laughs> oh, we have a very special relationship. Yes. I love seeing your, your oh. connection. It's oh, amazing. Thank yes. You. It's so nice. Um, so, yeah, you're always with me, what, every six weeks, I think. And yep. I feel, we feel like you just change the vibe of our cellar when you're in. Um, I'm not supposed to start <laughs> now. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think our relationship is very special and yeah, definitely. I definitely agree. This is why, like, why we wanted to bring you in as well, because we do have those certain clients that as soon as they walk into the room, mm-hmm. they change the energy mm-hmm. and you do that, Deb, when you no. walk into a room. And that's why we wanted to bring you on because mm-hmm. the whole mission of this podcast is to empower women, to make people feel better and you make us feel better. So, and it's an amazing thing that our like, you know, obviously our objective is hair and to yes. make amazing hair. But yeah. the like the amazing connections that we made is why we wanted to start this podcast. And when we were thinking of what kind of clients we can have on, we were obviously trying to bring in people that have a high vibe, who have changed our lives, who make the salon a better place when they walk in. And you're definitely one of them. Wow. So, so. You have no <laughs> idea how humbly honoured I am. By that. Yeah, I know. But that's, how, that's why we wanted to bring you in. And you obviously do have an amazing story, which I feel like makes everything that I just mentioned just then yeah. even more special because mm-hmm. no matter what you've been through, you have still managed to come in every single day and bring the light into the salon. And that's why we wanted to get you on because we want to know how you do it. We love learning about your life and we just want you to yeah feel feel comfortable to share your thing because your story because I feel like so many women need to hear it yeah yeah you blow me away with it it's just (laughs) unbelievable but I appreciate that and my thing to you is ditto I come in I like coming into your place wow it's like coming in home coming to home it's so lovely you guys are like family you make everyone feel welcome. We all feel like we, you know, can sit there and when we leave, I feel like a million dollars. Yeah. Oh. So you look you. like a million dollars when you walk in. <laughs> Woman. She comes in every... So for the listeners playing at home, just to give you a visual on Deb, stunning, like like was, wears the most amazing yes. outfit. It's like, oh. oh my, like such inspo. Like... <laughs> Every time she comes in, like she, every time it's like full of color and the colors placed amazing. I actually got inspo from you from one of my outfits. You, yeah, yeah, we haven't told I was, you. Yeah, we haven't told you. I was like, oh, oh my god, I should tell her. Like, I'll tell her when she comes on the podcast. You come in one day in this like green, green. with like orange sandals. I'm yeah. pretty sure, and uh, green and orange, and like a bottle green too, and a bright orange. Like, I was like, what? That is amazing. So I literally I had an engagement and I yep. scoured for a green dress and I went on wow. Sheen and found orange shoes and I was like, inspo. <laughs> Go girl. So not only are you an not only are you just an icon, you're a fashion wow. icon. <laughs> like, wow. I don't know how to reply, but I thank you guys. No, we love you. You're, we're gonna have, you're gonna have to post like um, your outfits every time and we're gonna tag the outfit because you need to be a fashion blogger. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to have to live up to that expectation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I appreciate love it. So that. funny. Yeah. I love it. So firstly, we wanted to hear about your story mm-hmm. um, and we thank you so much for coming on and telling us today. So 
basically you can tell a flash by telling how you, where did where did this all start? start? What's the story of Deb? Ah, uh, let's start go back. Start. start from the start. Deb was let's born ba- in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in South Africa, Port Elizabeth, small yep. town way down south. Um, beautiful. They call it the friendly city, and, and known to be one of the windiest cities too, but beautiful little uh, town. Very similar to some uh, a place like Adelaide. Yes, okay. okay. Yeah. So quite small. Yeah. Yeah, because I, sorry, just to preface yeah. this, I haven't heard your story fully okay. yet. So, okay. yeah. But, like, I've just given you bits and pieces. Yeah, I think. so yeah. I'm really interested to hear. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I'm, not, I'm sure as you'd appreciate uh, back in the back then in the day, uh, it was in the days of apartheid. Mm-hmm. And you can see by my colour of skin, I am not white. Um so I, we were called coloured because we were in between colour of the native black and, the, and um, the white South African. So we lived in our own segregated areas. So we were brought up as, you know, you, um, you're not as good as the white man. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, was, it wasn't hard because of difficult living back then because we had amazing family. My parents, my grandparents, the network of giving us that self-esteem to not be put down by that. So we went on with life like everybody else do and I went to an all-coloured school, primary school. And then as time went on, little things were uh, seeming to happen where um, integration was happening more so in the schools, the high Mm -hmm. school. So there was a Catholic high school that opened up to all, um, you know, whether black, white or Mm -hmm. Indian, whatever we are. Um, and we all, uh, and then Mum applied, and I got in, and I started my high school at Holy Rosary um, in one of the white areas, which was near in the city of Port Elizabeth. And were you born Catholic? I was, I was, I was born Catholic, but my parents were not; they were yeah. Anglican, and Dad was Catholic. Okay, yeah. So, um, but when my yeah, anyway, with the family, Mum and them all moved, you know, went on to being Catholic. But I was born Catholic with my brothers. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I enjoyed my high school at Holy Rosary. Beautiful uh, with the nuns. <laughs> had lots of <laughs> night, you know, good stories and some not so good stories <laughs> and some absolutely fabulous time with them and, you know, having fabulous friends, meeting. Um, like when we used to go to parties, when we were invited to the white girls' homes, it was um, like a, oh, wow, because we've never done this before. It was only with our own people. And um, same thing if we were invited to an, a native black, an African um, from South Africa. It was also like, wow, it was a, a different feeling. But those are the things we eventually learned and got used to and enjoyed. Although it wasn't always given the entire uh, freedom because we were only allowed to maybe, we had to get a, um, a pass to maybe go to the swimming pools that belonged to white only. Really? Uh, yep. Wow. You couldn't just sit anywhere on the bus. We had to go upstairs because whites were only allowed to sit down. So you were separated. So we were always separated. Okay. Even going to a school like this. And when and what time? What 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 year was this around? Like oh, my, this is going decade. back with my parents. You know, mum and them said it was uh, well when my grandmother could have been in the. I can't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. It was very. It was always British protectorate. It was always uh, colonial. You know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so I'd say it must have happened from. I don't want to be too wrong, but with my mother's generation, my generation, so probably anything from nineteen forty. It was segregated. And I'm yeah. sure it must have been segregated a little earlier than that. I just don't have the exact yeah. dates. So in 19, 1994 or 6, that's when Nelson Mandela mm-hmm. then took, you know, became, because he was a prisoner all the years for fighting for freedom, for, for blacks, for everyone. And then he became the prime minister of South Africa. But that's only in 1990. Sure, it must have been 1996. I could mm-hmm. be wrong. and um, But then by then I've left, so I'm just jumping the story. So yeah. segregation was from all of my life. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, uh, by the way, I had I have two siblings, one younger brother, one older brother. Mm-hmm. They went to the coloured schools. They continued going to coloured schools. Um, but also for financial reasons. It was never, you know, easy on uh, families back then. 
we never really went out for dinners and things. That wasn't part of our <laughs> forte for as a family. So it was mainly home cooking, go to the family, have lots of family time, cousins come together. It was that kind of thing. So we lived in the northern areas, which was way out, away from the cities, away from the beach. Um, and then, of course, coming back to my train of thought where I'm now, um, then I started, uh, I was dancing, of course, because mum owned a, dance, a dancing school. So um, that was uh, a, a quite an, a good thing. It, it kept me busy. I enjoyed dancing. Uh, she did ballet, jazz, tap and contemporary. So it was fabulous. And uh, she was very well known in the area. We were, sometimes that's, that's, sometimes I think I ran away from Australia because we were too well known <laughs> in, South, in Port Elizabeth. Yeah. So you could do absolutely nothing. You could do no wrong. Yeah, right. Sing as Charles. Yeah, <laughs> so everyone kind of yeah, knew your knew, family. Yes, yeah. yes. So anyway, um, and then of course I started a bit of modelling and uh, I joined a modelling uh, uh, school and um, ended up doing local model fashion sh uh, shows, um, different uh, photo photographic and just um, they could call it house modelling as well. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed that. It was lovely. And then there was a competition that I entered um, called the Spring Queen. So it was a beauty competition. And seeing I'm a dancer and I was in modelling, I was going, oh, you know, may as well follow all that <laughs> trend. Um, and then, of course, uh, I entered this modelling. And I would have been by this, I'd say I'd be 17, 18. Yeah when I entered this modelling competition, uh, not modelling, a uh, beauty competition called Spring Queen. And our, my fabulous modelling teacher, she was um, the host of it. She was like the mum, you know, did the whole. And so it came down to the semifinals. I was still in it. It came down to the final three. And How many people were in this? There would have been, oh, my, there's always a big contingency. Okay. There'd be over 100 right. brought down to 40. And okay. then from the 40, it went. Yeah. So um, just before the, the presentation of who was going to be, so we came back out of water and she came to me and she said, you know you can't win because you're not white. Mm. Oh. Yeah, right. And that just went, wow. Well, I went on. I, I uh, was chosen as the second princess, so that was third. You got your first, and then your uh, the, the girl who was the winner, and then the first princess of herself. And of course, I told mum. Mum was fuming because mum's yeah. very much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell mum anything. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that made me realise yeah. South Africa is not for me. Yeah, I didn't want to stay there. Yeah. So that's my little short spell of. Yeah. I didn't include family or much other than my brother, my mother, my yeah. father, fabulous people, um, fabulous extended family as well. And um, beautiful friends in South Africa. So my aunt moved to Australia, must have been in the late 70s, mm -hmm. with her young family and my uncle, uh, Dennis and Wendy. And I came on a holiday. The f uh, it was I was finishing school and then mum said, okay, fine, you can go, um, and have a you know, go and have a holiday, have some time out. And... I came to yeah I came to Australia. They were living in Auburn at the time, mm -hmm. and we went out to an RSL. And I think I must have just turned eighteen because you're not allowed in the club. Well, I was not eighteen yet, but but the first <laughs> I looked so um, adult like yeah, they right. didn't really question. So I'm yeah. I, I'm not too sure. It could have been either way. Just on the cusp because I came in December and my birthday is in February, so yeah. it was probably somewhere around maybe I. Um, Anyway, so I came in and um, they had a big boxing match. We sat at um, in the bar area where there was music because we loved to dance and, you know, that's part of our family thing. And out came this amazing guy, hunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, you know, and uh, as he came out, he went to the bar and for some reason our eyes met and it was like, and I was like, going, and then my aunt is going, Debbie's looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> and as family would, they, you know, be so embarrassing. Yeah. And I'm going, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so apparently he was too shy. He didn't come up. He sent his friend. And he, and the friend said, oh, look, this is that. And anyway, that's how it started, this relationship with my late husband, Boris Watts. So Boris was a car salesman for Capital Motors back then in, in, in um 
urban area, mm -hmm. but he lived with his uncle and aunt in Carlingford. And so we had a long distant relationship for four years. And it was like, wow. How <laughs> did you keep in contact? <laughs> mm. There Just would have been no mm. Facebook. All the writing. Writing, oh, yeah. yeah. The letters, no, letters, letters so the cute. cards. Oh, the, wow. The occasional phone call. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that was fabulous. So eventually, 1984, like the, just before 1984, he asked, he said, oh, look, Deb, I am ready to get married, Will, you know, and popped the question. Did and he ever come over to you, sorry? He never came to South Africa. I came over within the four years. I would have come over three times. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 And he literally paid for it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he was such a gorgeous guy. Yeah. That, you know, he did it all. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so I got married um, – on the 24th of uh, uh, March and uh, in 1984. How old were you? I would have been 20. 20. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> so you maintain that relationship? We really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Anyway. And when so he, sorry, when he asked you to... 2021. When he um, proposed to you, was that in person or was that over the phone? It was over the phone. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> And then we had to do the big, you know, immigration thing. And I had yeah. to go to immigration and said, yes, I am. Because, you know, those are the things they want yeah. to know if you engage. And you wouldn't have had a ring, I And think. I did. That's right. But when I came on the third trip, that's when I got the ring. Okay. See? And then yeah. obviously I could show it to the immigration uh, to immigration at the time. Uh, but, that, yeah, it was just a whirlwind. It was. And I was in the class. Oh, I said, my mother goes, Deb, you were going to go to uni. You were going to do your dance. Because we can do dance degrees at university. And, and I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> See you, bye, later. <laughs> See you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so, um, yeah, so got married at um, Oatland's house. Ooh, oh, you're yeah, really? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really lovely. And he thought to the entire wedding, because I came in February and then end of February, so most of it yeah, was right. organised. So him and his aunt did wow. it all. It was, um, honestly... You know. Wow. So did all your family fly over for your wedding? Other than mum only, my dad couldn't come out. Oh, so your dad wasn't dad at the wedding? Dad couldn't, he couldn't walk me down my, oh. the aisle. My uncle had to do that. So I had my aunt, my uncle, my cousin, two cousins, young, very young. And I had my grandmother because she came out on a holiday at that time. And then a few friends that uh, migrated to Australia but lived in Melbourne and they came wow. over. Yeah. Girlfriends that were my age. Cool. Yeah. So lovely. So there we go. We, <clears throat> pardon me, we um, got married on um, the 24th of March. Um, had a fabulous first few months and then I realised I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Having too much fun. I was like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I didn't expect to get pregnant this soon, yeah. but, but never you were 21? I, 20. I would have had my son at 21. Like wow. I, okay. was, I turned 21 and... No, my son was born and I turned 21 because he was born in January okay. 24. Right. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, um, my firstborn was a boy. Beautiful. Oh, can you imagine? Mum's everything. Oh, you know, first time mum. It was amazing. Beautiful Johnny. His name was John William Michael because he had to be named. He was named after Boris's dad. He was named after my dad and Boris's best mate who passed away. Okay. So hence we named him Poor Thing. <laughs> Yeah, most <laughs> three names. names. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then of course I I didn't take up dancing or doing anything. I went to class though, and then I started fitness. I was doing back then called aerobics. I became Ooh. an aerobic instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wear the costume? I, oh, I was in the high and the two thing. You know, the <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> Newton, <laughs> Olivia Newton the, John moment. The, <laughs> the John. The what's her name? Um, Fonda lady. Um, Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Ah. Yeah, she's the one. Oh, <laughs> honestly, it was fabulous. So I worked up at um, at uh, Hornsby in a gym there and I also had another a couple of gyms in Hornsby and we lived in Marsfield at this time. Yeah. And poor Johnny was so young. Um, but I trained him so well because when we – I used to take him to class with me. I used to have his little bunny rug and he would not move beyond the no. bunny rug. Because mm -hmm. mum goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a cutie pie, absolutely beautiful. Um, and then, of course, eventually, but I think it came to 1986 or 87, mum and dad applied to come over to, mm -hmm. South, to Australia with my youngest brother. My older brother got married, so he had his family and they stayed in South Africa. Yeah, and what was their reason for coming over? 
for a better life. Better life. Yeah. Better life. Yeah. So it was still apartheid back then. Yeah. Okay. And he was more opportunities. And more opportunities, more freedom, think, especially well. for my younger brother. And knowing what I'm talking about and coming, mm. you know, riding yes. home or calling and I think. And it was always mum's dream yeah. to always live abroad because she was a dancer. She wanted to do yeah. that. Um, anyway, so they came over. It could have been 86, 87. How old was your brother at the time? My youngest brother. He's nine years younger than me. Okay. So he must have... He was still in... Uh, high, he was in high, high school. Okay. So he started okay, at one of the Catholic schools in um, Eastwood. Mm-hmm. And he was... Oh, he just loved life. Absolutely. Mum struggled. Mum actually went back after a couple of years and took my poor brother with her. And she he didn't want... And Dad remained. Dad said, I'm not going. <laughs> I love Why did she go back? She... She couldn't handle the difference in Australia. Yeah, right. It was very different. The culture? The culture. Yeah. Yeah. Where in South Africa, things are more like mum being this high profile person. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's come to like, she's just had to like, oh, push her own trolley. We don't do things like that. We, back then in South Africa, we used to have kids that used to come and push your trolley. Oh, yeah. You had your right. maid, really? You had your maids. You had, yes, you know. I've heard of this. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, yes. so it, it was all that kind of lifestyle, yeah. which was a little bit hard for mum to yeah. accept. But when she went back, she went, uh, uh, coming right back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why was she back in South Africa? She was for maybe three months. Oh, really? <laughs> Why? Why? Just, Just a, things have changed. Yeah, okay. Right. Things have changed. She didn't realise. She, she didn't, didn't realize. Realize. You don't realise what no, you have until you don't exactly. have it. Yeah. And thank goodness my dad didn't follow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well done, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so by then we moved to Windsor mm-hmm. because we wanted a home. We wanted to raise our children in the backyard. We were living yeah. in a townhouse at the time in Martin. And um, their mum and dad moved to Blacktown. They lived in Reservoir Road. With my brother, and he went then to Mitchell's High or something like that. Um, and then I had a, my second baby, Terry Ann, in 1988. Um, she was born at Borkham Hills Hosp- Private Hospital. And um, our family life was just going from one to the, you know, just, just soaring, doing well. Mum opened up the dance school, so I kind of helped her. I wasn't in partnership with her at the time because it's, it's with having a dance school, it's not easy mm-hmm. <laughs> back then, you know, and it depends on the person as well. So mum ran a dance school in um, Blacktown in the ca- in the Catholic school, uh, the primary school um, in Alloa Street. And then I uh, helped her. By then, Terry and John, John would have been about school age, just started. He would have been five, six years of age. And Terry would have been about three, three, turning four. And I um, then thought, oh, look, it's not really paying, so I need to maybe find another kind of extra job. And um, Sorry, your husband was still car salesman? Still car time? salesman, but he moved from then. Yeah. He came to be manager here at Sinclair Hyundai oh, yeah. and Sinclair Ford. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and um, I was doing very well uh, as a car salesperson, but he became the manager then. And... Uh, so I applied for a job at Revlon in Grace Brothers back then. Oh, oh Grace my... Brothers. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. You know, Grace Brothers. I remember when it used to be called that. <laughs> I was going through my grandmother's, like, I was helping her clean out and I found a receipt and I'm like, this receipt's from Grace Brothers. <laughs> I was like, why did you still have this? <laughs> Unless it's a very good uh, product that she got. <laughs> You just don't know how it's an escalating uh, price. <laughs> I think I'm too young for Grace Brothers. Can someone give me some? Um, it's it's Maya. Myers. Yeah. Oh, Myers. Yeah. Okay. It was called Grace Brothers. Yeah, yeah. right. So which yeah. one were you going to apply for? So Revlon. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it Was it in the Penrith? Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got the job. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is great. And um, managed to, uh, you know, so I worked with, sorry, with, with um, Revlon for about, oh, it could have been a few months, four months. What were you doing? Um, makeup artist. Oh, cool. So just, yeah, and, um, cosmetic girl uh, on the yep. counter and selling their local products on at uh, the Revlon counter. And then uh, uh, I, I loved Elizabeth Arden back then and so the uh, job came available with Elizabeth Arden. And so I jumped counter and I was became um, counter manager there and enjoyed that. Still teaching, still teaching dancing because that's my life. I can't not teach. And my children were dancing, but mum had the school. It was mum's school. And so anyway, so 
this one day I had to have a meeting and the meeting was in the evening and it was straight after my teaching at in uh, the dancing school in Blacktown. And I would have had both my children with me. I drove down. It was 13th Wednesday, 13th of April, a Wednesday. And um, I thought, oh, what am I going to do? I've got this meeting. Call no, I didn't call him because there was no phones then. It was with at mum's house. I said to Boris, look, you're going to have to probably pick up the children after dancing because I'll have to come straight to a meeting. Anyway, um, finished of teaching, kissed my beautiful son and my daughter and I said, you be good for Nana and eat all the food and blah. And so anyway, they went, they stayed with mum until mum finished teaching. I came up to um, to have the meeting at uh, my, at Grace Brothers. Uh, we could have finished at about 8.30. So anyway, and then drove across to um, Windsor the, um, and came into our street and I noticed my house was in darkness and I'm going, whoa, you know, because he should have been home, the kids should have been fed. Anyway, parked in the garage, went in, put on the lights, had spaghetti bolognese still in the pot that I made <laughs> for dinner and I um, called mum. I said, mum, when I, did Boris leave? Oh, my good God, Deb. Jesus, over an hour or two maybe ago. And I went, mm. what? I said, oh, maybe he's dropped in at a friend, which he's never done, but making mm -hmm. me just thinking. Or maybe he went to McDonald's with the children. He doesn't eat McDonald's because he's a bodybuilder. <laughs> 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 but I thought, oh, maybe he'll just, you know, spoil the kids. You're probably thinking of everything. Oh. Of, yeah. Every, and, and, of course, I pulled the blinds because I had one big window at the front, beautiful you know, you could see out to the front to see when they were coming. Still talking on the phone to mum. Anyway, uh, I put the phone down and I'm thinking, what could have been? Did they beat me up? Did they beat me up? And I see a police car pull up in front of the... And I'm going, what the hell? And the lady, the lady constable got out and there was a guy, that, uh, the gentleman constable that was dropped in. They came to my door knocked on it and I stood and I opened and I said, what happened? What's wrong? And she said, you've got to sit down. And I said, what's? And I said, no, I'm not. Tell me what happened. And they said, no, you've got to. I said, no. And I dropped to the ground. I said, tell me what happened. And they said, your husband met up with an accident. Your son is killed instantly. And your daughter's fighting for her life. And I went. I don't know what made me get up and just run down my street. I just ran and I ran. And I think they were following me. And then I ended up at a friend's place. And I was knocking on the door. And I said, help me, help me. And it was, she didn't want to open the door because she thought I'm fighting with my husband, which I've never done. <laughs> and she just thought she didn't know what to expect. And I said... Oh, eventually they got me back home. And then I said, I've got to call his boss. Oh, I must have called his boss. Did you call your mum? I didn't call mum back this time. Well, you, you weren't at the home. You weren't at your home. I went back, back to mum, but I didn't call, and I don't know why Boris's top manager, the boss, called, and he... And he said, Deb, did you find Boris? I must have called, um, you know, earlier on when I was talking to mum. And, and I said, um, you won't believe what happened. And, and then, oh, my God, to hear that man sob on the other side. And I, um, and, the poli and the police said, come, we've got to take you to the hospital. We were at Blacktown Hospital. And I then said, then what's his name? Joe said, Deb. I'll take you. I said, no, I can't wait for you to come. We'll meet you at the hospital. So um, I got to the hospital at Blacktown. We couldn't go down the Richmond Blacktown Road because that's where the accident occurred. Just so past off the road. Goldfield, yeah. Oh, so it, just, the road. it was a very wet, rainy night, apparently. Yeah. Anyway, they we, we went around the old Windsor Road way and we um, eventually got 
to Blacktown Hospital. I saw the ambulance park there. I wasn't sure if that maybe, uh, you know, I was injuring my children one day. I just didn't think anything in the time. And I came in the hospital. I can't believe I saw my entire family sitting in the waiting room. I don't know how the news got around, what happened, but my entire family, my mother, my aunts, my uncle, my there were so many of them all there. And I just walked and I was, I, 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 could, I could sense what I was doing, but I was in a day. I could mm. feel the, Absolutely. Like, just no blood in me. That's yeah. how I felt. And then I saw my late husband just sitting on the bench with a blanket over him and he was rocking himself and he was just in a totally different, <laughs> crying, bewildered, just hysterical. I went to him, I hugged him and I held him and I said, it's okay. In a way, there's fans straight. Was he really hurt? He only had a scratch on him. Right. What happened, if I can go into the accident, he was travelling behind a car that was going very slow to his liking. Uh, You know, sometimes it could drive a bit too fast for my liking. (laughs) And I think she applied brakes or something happened and he overtook her. But it was so wet and apparently he should never have. Mm -hmm. He took a chance, overtook. And then just before, I think he was coming to a dip of water and he applied his brakes and that aeroplaned his car to hit the tree, a huge tree on the side, the left side. My John was in front with a seatbelt on. My daughter at the back just had a lap sash because mm-hmm. they were old enough. Terry was six and a half mm-hmm. at this time, by this time. And uh, five and a half, sorry, turning six. And so they didn't have to be in a car seat back mm-hmm. then. They were the young, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what happened? The f- John's door, Hulango, John fell out of the car from out of the seatbelt. That's what I think so. Terry then, with the impact, her body just slammed. So it kind of broke every bone in her body. And he's my what my hu- late husband recalled is that he held John and he was trying to get between the two children, but he said no one was helping him. So I don't know if it's that's his, when you go into trauma, you of don't course, know yeah. Yeah, what, what your mind does to you. But he said no one was helping him. And eventually the, the ambulance came, um, kind of helped him. And he then, uh, both Johnny and Terry were put in the ambulance plus him. And, of course, they pronounced John dead as when they arrived. And then Terry was, obviously, had to be attached to every life life-saving kind of instrument to keep her alive. They did that at the hospital. So, to you know, I, I don't know what was going through Boris's head, but it, it could, must have just been too much for him to cope with, you know, because you could see it was just off his head. It was in the like at the hospital? Yeah. 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 They, ke- they must have given him something to sedate him maybe mm-hmm. too because he was just sitting on and he was just rocking it yeah. crazy. And then, of course, they said, did you want to go to your daughter? And I said, no, I went to Terry. And, oh, my God, it was just so to see. She had ev- so many metal things going through her head, this way, arms, legs. She yeah. hadn't been through surgery, though, yet, had she? Nothing. No, not yet, not yet. And the blood, the blood. And then they said to me, do you want to go and see your son? And for some reason I said no. I couldn't look at my John in death. I said no way. So were you by yourself or did you have a family member coming with you? I did I think maybe my youngest brother would have been with me, mm. Brenton. At, at this point, mm-hmm. did you were you did you feel like you weren't fully comprehending or believing that Johnny had passed? I what did that feel like? I was numb. Yeah. I was totally numb. Yeah. And I jumped a little because when I entered that hospital, I don't know what it was, if it's my brain, if it's a God, if it's a what, just comforted me, just said, it's okay, babe. It's okay. It was a feeling. It was no words. It was Mm -hmm. just the feeling I got. And I think that's the feeling that helped me 
kind of stay in that. I, I just be only do it that particular way, which was no, Im no, um, no getting hysterical. No, no. I was I was in tears, but not crying. Mm -hmm. um, Deb, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Were you pregnant at the same time? I don't know if I was pregnant at that time. Right. Because Cherie was born in February the following year and this happened in April. So I gather I must have fallen pregnant in that time. After the children. Yeah. Because we went, we just took time away and we went to Dunk Island. Oh, him and okay, I, okay. Just to have some time. Yeah. So I don't think I was because if you think of counting, the timing doesn't, doesn't, work, doesn't right. work out. And um, do you think you were running off adrenaline at that point? I think yeah. I would have been. Yeah. I think I would have been. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, and and being the only person that wasn't in the incident so from the family, you probably felt like did you feel like you had to have that responsibility? Mm. Yeah, to hold I had to take control. Yeah. I had to keep us now. I thought, Deb, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, look at them wailing, and you mm -hmm. know, my poor lad. I think I got it. Was bad to see him. And then my children and my daughter. And but it's my John. And that was my little baby, like my, my firstborn, and I just couldn't go and look at him. And then I turned to my brother, so young. He would have been about 20 himself. And I said, can you go and kiss me? And he was like, oh, my God. I think about it now, and I'm asking someone so young. And I said, like, I thank my brother. I thank Brenton for doing that. I don't know if I did back then, but today I said, and I went, I think about it, my for someone so young to look at how what he must have looked like. Mm -hmm. Because by the time I saw him in the mortuary, he would have been all cleaned up. And, you know. and uh, anyway, from that, it took a long time. Then they flew Terry over to Westmead Hospital. She needed to have brain surgery urgently because they did say every bone in her body was broken. And if there's a young child, like... If anyone can recover, it's a child that age. Mm -hmm. How old was she? Sorry? She would have been five and five. a half, okay. yeah. Because she would have turned six in August next year. And I, um, we didn't go in the, in the helicopter with them. That We couldn't do that. They got in the ambulance. We drove along to, to, to Westmead Hospital. Was this the same night? The same yeah. night. So three o'clock that morning, they were operating on Terry. Mm -hmm. She had the operation. She wasn't out of the neck of the woods. They had to, uh, like, she had to get a bladder bag and all that. It was just for for a child that young. I can't understand. Just couldn't understand how she could cope with pain. But they said she was on heavy morphine. So she was conscious. At she this? wasn't. She wasn't. She couldn't. No. They couldn't uh, have no. her conscious in the course of the pain. Right. Mm -hmm. So she was in the children's section. You know the um, ICU section. And um, I, I'm just trying to go through. Uh, we then sat, sat you know, we had a, kept a vigil, 24 hours. Um, Father Gavonia, he used to be a priest at, up in uh, Gardenham, uh, but he was the chaplain at the time, Catholic priest, and so we kept a vigil with him. And then Father McNamara, who was our parish priest from Windsor, he came home, so we just prayed and we prayed on our knees and we prayed. And then we was we sat with Terry and I used to just look at her and the tears would just roll down the side of her cheek. Oh, you know, then you realise. So we were told to talk to her and we did. And as as a parent, my husband, my late husband then, he said, Terry, if we get through this, I'm gonna take you to Disney. I'm <laughs> gonna take you to Disney. So, you know, the the child thing that he wanted to promise her. And then Johnny was still in the sorry Johnny was still in the mort in in the mortuary. This was coming on to four days, and people said, "What are you going to do? You can't leave him this long in the mortuary." And I said, "No, Terry's not going to leave. I'll bury my children together." Terry was still alive. Terry was still, and I just don't know why. I was she it. conscious? And no, no, she was still no, in. No, they yeah. couldn't. They couldn't yeah, yeah. see. So you felt that feeling? I just felt that. Yeah. And I couldn't, my husband, my late husband said, please, I'm sorry. And I thought, okay, I won't share that. But in my heart, I knew she wasn't going to leave. And then on that Sunday morning, we were called in, come and say your goodbyes to your daughter. She's going. She's, uh, 
we didn't know what happened. And even though we were also given by the, sur no, the surgeon who did at the time say, I guarantee your child 110% will survive. Oh, wow. And I think that's what Boris clung to, mm -hmm. where I went, I don't know, I wasn't dismissing him as a doctor or a surgeon. I just felt, I just didn't know. They were inseparable. John mm -hmm. and Terry were inseparable in their little short lives together. And... We, yeah, three o'clock that Sunday morning, we were told to come and say goodbye to Terry. And, um, yeah, we said uh, goodbye to our baby. And she was whispered to the mortuary. And that was where we think, well, Jesus Christ, we're sorry to have you go now. You have a family, you're in your house, you are cooking, you are having a family life, and then all of a sudden there's... The, the, like the rug has just been pulled out under mm. you. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't believe it. We walked in our Windsor home. It was so empty. It was horrible. It was horrible. It just couldn't, it didn't work. We couldn't stay there. And um, then after, I don't think Boris could cope very well. So three times he attempted suicide. We found him at three different places. One was the tree where he tried to attempt suicide. And, and then... Do you think he tried to blame himself? He did. Yeah. He did blame himself. What, what was he going through at that time? He... Before... Yeah, before. Oh, he was just... He was just in a daze and he said, Deb, you know I've got to go to our children. And I went, I know how you feel, darling, but I said, you know I need you. And by this time I was pregnant... So Sorry, I missed out the part going to Dunkal because yeah. that's what we, when we sold our home, we just felt, you just go holiday. away. Yeah. 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 People were fabulous. People were amazing. They would bring um, the amount of food, the amount of money, uh, invitations to go, not invita um, to go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Vouchers. Vouchers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. So there was a lot of support. Oh, the support. And it wasn't just from Windsor. It was from everywhere, yeah. abroad. It was unbelievable. Was this this made as this made the news? This it? did make yeah. the news, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, like I said, we went to Dunkarling, and it's possible that Cherie could have been conceived <laughs> in Dunk. But it was, you know, you think about it. Oh my God, did I make? Did I really have make a bad <laughs> <Is that the laughs> say that? But it was such a uh, an emotional roller coaster. We went. We were supposed to stay for ten days and. I couldn't, we were there for four and a half days. We left, came back. The house went through for a sale, as a sale. And then we thought, oh, you know, it's about planning our lives, you know, to get back on track, I suppose, I don't know. But still with um, seeing a counsellor, I wasn't with a psychologist back then, at that time. Uh, seeing a counsellor, like, she just said, just do it in your time, just do it in your time. Can I ask something, sorry? Yeah. Was your husband looked at by the police after this accident? Yes, he was. Yeah. So yes. was it investigated? It was investigated. Okay. And, and it came back that he was going to be held culpable for... Okay, then that probably would have accident. been a lot of stress on him. That did. Yeah. That we ended up, like, we had to put him in at St. John of God. And he just, like, yeah, he was going to be held accountable for, mm -hmm. for both Terry and John. And um, because... Apparently, I still don't have the report. I've never asked for it. Mm -hmm. The lady who drove behind Boris, she said that he was driving aggressively. He overtook her because she was going too slow. He also apparently flickered his brakes on her from behind. Mm -hmm. and that. So he... Um, Obviously, a road rage. I don't know. But <laughs> think it was, and um, yeah. So they put it down to that Boris was driving recklessly and yeah. probably a bit fast. Do you know what the charges would have been? Negligence. Negligence. Negligence driving. Yeah. 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 And were they going to be it? like, was it jail time back then, it, or do you know? We what don't it? know. Would have had to go to court. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was going to go through court. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when he could not accept the fact that he was going to be branded his children's killer. Yeah. I'm he sure couldn't cope with that. No, yeah. no parent intends to want to no. take no. any no. of your, no. you know. Yeah. And 
So, yep, I found out that I was pregnant. Um, Where did you live when you come back from? We ca- we were still in Windsor, but we sold, and then we moved to Mum's place. Yep. We, we were living with Mum in Blacktown. Yep. And then in that time, I don't know, we looked at a, a house and land package in Glenmore Park, mm-hmm. and we were with Beechwood, and we, um, you know, liked something, and we thought, okay, we instead of... You know, the money's sitting there, do something. So we went ahead with it. And um, um, and he was okay with that. But I could see he was, he carried that pain, you know, waking up in bed in the morning. And I looked at him and it's just, it's just not with it. He wasn't, yeah, wasn't present. You could see that alive was that loved his gym, that loved his fitness, that loved life, was just not there. Did he go back to work after this all happened? He tried. He went back to work. And so he ended, he was doing maybe a couple of days. He didn't go full on. And what they were very good. They were very good as far as work was. And, um, you know, when he, you know, how often he had to come in, he just had to do it in his time. And then uh, it was the 9th of November that he uh, he called me in the morning and he just said, oh, it's busy here, you know. And I said, oh, okay, I'll see you maybe, you know. He said, I'll be a little early. And I said, okay, we'll be a little early. Um, and then I was nothing, three o'clock, no bollocks. I'm going, oh, maybe he stayed back or he went to the gym. But he did, I know, he didn't take it. Again, just looking for excuses. Mm-hmm. And then again, the police came to my mother's house and was just done told that your husband took his life at the banks of the Lupino River. And this, by this, I was seven months pregnant. And this, I just went, I couldn't believe it. I just thought, I knew in my heart too that I don't, I didn't expect him to take his life, but I knew it was just like he was going through hell. And I knew he was. It's possible because of the other attempts he had. And he always used to say to me, no, I've got to go with John and Terry. Yeah, I've got to go to John and Terry. And I was thinking, you know you're not going to go with John and Terry. You know, you take your life. It's frowned upon in the Catholic Church. You can't do such nonsense. Um, but anyway, with my poor letter from God, they brought his tie. They brought his um, wallet because he apparently folded it before and then... Apparently took a gun from the safe in at work. It belonged to one of the managers, and uh, they were at the time they were handing guns back in. Oh, okay. And but it wasn't held in a safe place. I think I don't think it was under lock and key. Okay. And he must have been watching or something. I don't know. Anyway, so he took the the car and went onto the. What's the other side? Little uh, River, but uh, on the other side river of the road. Yeah, L- River mm-hmm. Road. Yeah. He went on that side near the M4 bridge. Yeah. And a fisherman apparently did, it must have happened in the morning after he spoke to me. Because the fisherman found him around about three o'clock. Oh, so he was there for a few hours before someone yeah. found him. Yeah. What, what yeah. was your last phone call with him like? Did he give you any indication? That's what he said. I'll be home early. Mm. I didn't think much of it, but in hindsight, didn't take any lunch with him. But I thought, okay, well, he's still in the phase of he may get himself something, but he did like his own cooked meals that they mm. or, you know. But by then, the mind is all chaotic for him. So he, he was taking lunch, but this day he didn't take mm-hmm. lunch at all. So, so you thinking, didn't, sorry, sorry, you didn't second guess anything? No. No. You didn't, you didn't, he didn't, um, you think he planned it from the morning? I don't know unless he was, unless he was aware that the gun could have been there mm-hmm. a few days before mm. and he was work, you know, playing for time. I don't know. So he went to work. And so he went to work, in the left in the morning, called me, called me and said, like, uh, I love, you know, talk. Um, I said, how's it going? And he goes, yeah, I don't feel like being here, but mm. anyway, it's shit, and that kind of thing. So, mm. and, and um, he said, I'll see you in the afternoon. And that's what I'm thinking now. It could not have been, you know, planned. It must have just happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in saying so, the guy who owned the gun, he wa- 
was charged oh, for negligence, he? yeah, for keeping. However, I know Boris did not want this man to be held yes. accountable in yeah. any way. Yeah. It was his choice. Wouldn't have been his intention. Well, no. He would have done it no matter which. Yes, it would so have. I went as a witness to kind of, you know, say that this is just not on. I don't agree with it. And I know my late husband would not want this. So, um, John, I mean, sorry, Boris was buried with the children because uh, when we buried the kids at um, the crematorium at that um, castle book, mm -hmm. we, we, we bought the family plot and then uh, so he was buried because he wanted to be buried and he made, gave strict instructions to be buried on top of John because uh, John was his little hero and, of course, his daughter was his everything mm -hmm. and... Uh, John played football, John played cricket, he was this budding um, sports person. So mm -hmm. he was a, you know, he, he was dad's little apple of the eye. And his daughter was, for other, you know, mm -hmm. Absolutely. there was <laughs> no favoritism, but just little yeah. thing. And um, yeah, so no family. Pregnant, seven months pregnant, sitting in my mother's lounge. And then I really became terrible in all the... I was like, oh, Jesus, this is just not on. This is not right. I don't know how I carried the show. I have no idea how I managed to do it. I um, booked myself in at the Windsor Hospital at the time. And um, I saw a, a lovely doctor, a, a lovely obstetrician there. He was fabulous. And... Uh, I think I would have been Karen. Uh, Sheree was supposed to have been born on the on on the fifth, sixth of February, but uh, she was a couple of days. I mean, a couple ten days late, and I couldn't anymore. And I said, "Just let this child out of me." <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get to the end of pregnancy, um, I was just very traumatized too during the pregnancy, and then I. Um, uh, we had John. My brother was present at the birth, and so was um, his wife, uh, Andrea. And I gave birth to this beautiful, nearly 10 pound baby. Wow. wow. <laughs> huge. <laughs> huge. Oh, my God. Oh gosh. Huge. And. Were your other children that big? No. No. <laughs> seven. She overcooked. <laughs> seven and seven and a half ki yeah, uh, a pounds. Around. They yeah, were. Right. She overcooked. She, and she did. She came out very wrinkled. <laughs> like an old little person with gorgeous little old butt. She was the most beautiful. <laughs> when I looked at her, when she used to lie next to me, this beautiful face just looked like her brother, her sister and her dad. Oh. It was just the most, I could and the most angelic child, not, didn't cry, always mm. wake up in the morning and she's like, smiling. Oh, <laughs> it's a very different to my other two. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful little, um, little baby. And then, of course, mum and I, um, uh, we, we decided that we were going to go to, uh, we were going to, oh, I was still building. And they said, oh, look, do you want to continue? You don't have to. You know, we'll let you fulfill with a contract. And I went, no, this was the plan. This is what we're going to do. And uh, I went ahead and I said to mum and dad, you're going to come and visit me, you know. And uh, so we moved to Grandma Park. Uh, beautiful. This would have been my first. Um, brand new home because uh, we never had that before, mm -hmm. you know. Windsor was a, sorry, was a beautiful home, but it was a lot older. Mm -hmm. Europe must have been built in the 70s or 60s. But a beautiful, lovely, lovely home. And um, so, yeah, dad and mum, the most, the, honestly, the, the, just talk about support. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're lucky they were here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could lean on them in every which way. Honestly, it was beautiful. My extended family was fabulous. I could, uh, they were there. Friends, the church, they were all really good. We, I couldn't, you know, like, what more? Four years when we moved in, four years, I struggled. Mm -hmm. oh. I just used to close my door and just, mum used to get little Cherie. And I used to just sob and cry, listen to my music of my children, that I used to, little playlist that I had 
John is the one that he loved was lover, lover, you don't love me no more. But he used to say, <laughs> mother, mother, <laughs> you don't love me. And I said, <laughs> so little things like that. Whitney Houston and I will always love you. Oh, so it was all that, just just daydreaming in my children's um, memories, really, and of my late husband. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was, again, it took quite a long time because this was 84, yeah. And then um, we didn't really have a, a built church in Glenmore Park, and we then... Um, used to go to a, a church, like at different homes. We used to have church at different homes, go and have mass, should I say. And uh, then Sister Marg and Sister Anna came along, and uh, they it was beautiful. No priest involved, two beautiful nuns, and we called it Church Below the Rooftops. Mm -hmm. This was the most amazing place I've ever been to for worship or love, or they were just beautiful. And not putting this in, like, I love Father McNamara and many other priests, but this was just, there's something about the the, the, um, the community, the mm -hmm. connection. And Cherie would be three by now, turning three. I went back to work, so I was working for Elizabeth Arden, and work was great that way. Never mm -hmm. pressured to come back. It took them oh, for years, yeah. so it was fabulous. In that respect, they really, I must say, looked after me. And um, I, um, I had little duties at our local uh, community church and I used to um, like do the flowers or make things look pretty and I do all the um, artistry side of the altar and mm -hmm. so but and that was lovely so they but they kind of could see that and, and sister said I want to encourage you to do a bit more and sister Anna was fabulous sister Anna Warlow and because uh, she was very artistic beautiful nun. And uh, so anyway, uh, Sister Ma came to me and she said, oh, Deb, I want you to meet this guy. And I'm thinking, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> Don't want to meet him. Probably the last thing on your uh, mind. Oh, you know, no idea. <laughs> Not interested. But I said, oh, she said, but maybe you could start like a group of, you know, uh, where parents, what they've been through, mm -hmm. single parents maybe or what they've been through. Be nice. You've got the, you know, I'm going, oh, don't put me in charge of something. But anyway, I'll do my best. So anyway, yeah. So she said, um, so anyway, I went to mass this morning, nine o'clock. It was at the public school. We were having mass. She comes and she goes, he's here with his children. Oh, sorry, I should say. <laughs> he's here with his, with his, and I went, oh, I've got to. Okay. Um, I didn't have uh, Cherie with me. She stayed home with mum. So I went into the front and um you know, nothing to this poor guy that walked in front of me. And he would have had about six, seven children and they walked in front and they sat and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boy, okay, he's got six children. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. <laughs> it wasn't that guy. <laughs> it was just another uh, guy that came and his wife wasn't there that day. And I, I didn't obviously know of them before. Anyway, so after Mass, he said, I'm Come and in, I'll introduce you. And there was this, he was such a gorgeous, humble, though, but beautiful, good looking man. And two gorgeous little girls. How old were the girls? Good, um, six or seven. And oh, no, Diana must have been a little older, seven. And Carly must have been five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and they just stood with everybody like mm. this. And I'm going, you know you're so beautiful anyway we got talking and um he was nervous as <laughs> <laughs> and I was like it's okay you know um uh lovely to meet you I'm sure we'll catch up again didn't make we, we did exchange phone numbers and um anyway I just thought oh yeah it's not bad <laughs> and it's the first time I felt like that I didn't honestly I am no regard whatsoever mm -hmm. but this guy just turned like made me feel like whoa okay <laughs> so we <went> home <laughs> and, I, and I kind of started dressing up a little didn't look <laughs> as daggy as I was <laughs> and mum goes what's going on with you what's going on and I'm going oh, I think I met someone that I really think is nice mum <laughs> she goes oh just remember you've got a little girl and I said he's got two <laughs> anyway so all that comes Monday, no call. Tuesday, no call. I'm going, oh, my goodness, did I not impress him? <laughs> <laughs> but 
Wednesday he calls and he goes, oh, and I'm going like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, we went for our first family outing at um, Pizza Hut. <laughs> Pizza Hut. <laughs> So your first date was with your children at Gourmet. Pizza Hut. Gourmet. Pizza Hut. What are you? Pizza, the one in High Street. That club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 anyway. So I thought, but that was beautiful. The girls loved it. There was, you know, they had that like the um, um all small. You can, was it all you can eat? Eat that. Yeah. Thing. Yep. Yep. And we just sat and we chatted and chatted. And Cherie was three, four, and then they would have been a little older, like I said. And, and the girls uh, got on well together. Oh, Talk about just poof. Yeah, right. It just, <laughs> I was like. They melded. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. And, it, and then our relationship just went from strength to strength. I, like, didn't expect this. <sighs> Honestly, what a man. I was thrown away, blown away, sorry, <laughs> with blown away. this. <sighs> such a caring, loving guy. And, so, and taking care of his daughters because he lost his wife to cancer to breast cancer and his late wife would have been I'd say uh, buried about six months before I met them mm -hmm. and to some degree some people thought it was too soon for him and I'm thinking oh, I don't I know because it took me four years mm. I wasn't gonna argue the point um, but I suppose when love is ready it's ready mm -hmm. Can't it comes out of it. nowhere. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't stop it. So we had some families, like you know, going their way because it wasn't men. You know, shouldn't you shouldn't do this? You should do this. Anyway, if the nuns can put it together, way yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? Who are we? And uh, anyway, so um, yeah, we um, just grew from strength to strength. Uh, he had his home and I had mine. And uh, mum and dad by then moved out, and they were. Uh, got themselves into a townhouse. I resold the house where we that I bought with my late husband. Um, and we I moved um, within Glamour Park again. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you popped the question. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. When was it now? In nineteen ninety nine. How old would you have been at the time, Deb? I was um, let me go back down to girls 30 and 30 in 94. So I would have been about, is it 36? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, 36, I think so. Uh, yeah, just before 30. No, I would have been 35, mm -hmm. 34, because uh, I remember Bria being born when I was 36. So I must have been earlier. Um, I would have been 34, 35. And uh, he popped the question. I was in awe. We set the date for... Uh, no, November the 3rd, um, 20, in 2000, mm -hmm. in 2000. And uh, we got married up at, um, oh my goodness, it's the Brothers uh, Beautiful Sandstone Place up in Mulgoa. Oh, um, um, it's like a funny name. Yes. What's the name? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh uh, that's going to um, haunt me. I know, that's so <laughs> annoying. Um, it's called something like right. Fancy. Um, I this up. Yeah. And they never had a wedding there before. And they went, why not? And we just put the wedding together. They had a beautiful little um, place where they used to have for the brothers to come and eat. And we just turned that into a reception. It's not Fern Hill, no? Not, not Fern, Fern no, Hill. That's it's, beautiful. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's something called, brothers, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. I, I know exactly know. what we'll you're talking We'll have to Google about. it because I know what it is. It's, oh, and is it guy's like, going to go, you can't remember we got yeah. married. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Anyway, so yeah, um, and we would have had about oh, a good 60 to 80 people at the wedding. Yeah. Invited so, like, just friends and family. And and the cake said, to new beginnings. Uh -huh, so the new chapter in our life. And little did I know, I was, had a little oven, a bun in the oven. <laughs> and I was <laughs> with our beautiful daughter. And Bria's going to go, Mum, why did you say that? <laughs> 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 and it, um, yeah, so we had this amazing little girl to add to the three girls. So so four, four beautiful girls. girls. 
And she little cheerleader uh, squad. Oh, 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 my little dancing squad. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> little dancing girl. Yeah, your mum would have loved that. Oh, she did. Oh, she did. And um, so, Sheree, I mean, sorry, Be- uh, Bria was born in August. Mm-hmm. So we had a fabulous, um, uh, a, she was a gr- great birth. It was easy. It was lovely. It wasn't trauma. Like my first two births were very traumatizing. It was, uh, Johnny was 24 hours. Ugh. Terry would have been about maybe eight to 12 hours. And then Cherie wasn't too bad, but just that she was overbaked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and with the Bria. She was oh, oversized. She was just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Need a little warning yeah. on her. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, no, she was uh, just a beautiful barb. Um, big, she would have only been nine. I think she was a nine pound. Nine still pounds, a big baby. Still, yeah, a, big still baby. a big baby. Still a big baby. And, um, and they were just so happy with their little sister. And by now you've got this blended family mm-hmm. and it's like they're not, we not, don't feel blended. We were, it's just amazing. We, the, the kids, my, Cherie loved Guy so much. You know, she always, she says, that's my dad. I know I've got a dad in heaven, but this is my dad. He's such an amazing, and Donna and Carly, I couldn't ask for two more beautiful daughters. When I first met you and you told me you had four daughters, I thought they were all your four before oh. I learnt your story. <laughs> I didn't know that they were obviously from different yeah. families. Yeah. One, sorry, one, like so, when we go into the shops that, and they're done with Dana, they'll go, oh, you look like your mom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they can't say that about Carly because Carly's blonde. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, da, uh, um, beautiful. What do you say to people when they say that? Yeah. <laughs> you just I go, go along with I go, it? I go, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you just go along with it. Yeah. Never, ever wanted my children to ever feel that they were my stepdaughters. Yes, yeah. Or they, uh, never. Yeah. It was all... Uh, Unless they are wanting to say that, I do not dismiss their beautiful mother. Yes. Tracy was their beautiful mother who gave birth to them. Obviously, they, uh, you know, when they raised Guy and Tracy, when they raised Dana and Carly, they were fabulous parents because what beautiful little girls they mm-hmm. were. Yeah. Nev- oh, honestly, I had my little rat bag, Cherie. She, yeah. was, <laughs> she got to, I don't call her a but she's such an energetic my little bunny, <laughs> energizer bunny. She was like, Whoa. <laughs> where these were two very, you know, um, ladylike little girls, yeah. like sweet, <laughs> sweet girls. And, um, yeah, and our family just grew from strength to strength and Bria came in, the love child. <laughs> 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 Don't say that, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, uh, we just, yeah, we grew from strength to strength. We had our home, we built, uh, not built, we bought a, a quite a, Close to being brand new home in uh, Huntingdale in um, in in uh, Glenmore Park, mm-hmm. and then um, I got into into the suite. I gave up my years by this time. I didn't want to continue. I went back into teaching full time. I took the studio over from Mum. We uh, then were teaching at um, Bethany, yeah. And so I had uh, we were running it out of Bethany's uh, little school uh, school hall and um, tiered learning area. And that was fabulous. I would have had a, about a stu- maybe close to 150 students. Mm-hmm. So it was lovely. It was just a nice size. Mm-hmm. The girls loved it. Oh, you know, dancing. And what was so great, I, you know, you could be with your children as a mom. Mm-hmm. Like only in the afternoons I taught. My girls were with me. My niece was with me as well. So it was always, you know, with my girls. I just felt so privileged I could do uh, something I love and still look after my children. Yes. Amazing. It's beautiful. And then from there we went on to Mulgoa because I bought a studio onto the house. But that's another story because I didn't end up using it as a studio because mm-hmm. <laughs> of whatever reasons, um, council reasons it wasn't. Yeah. So there's many things to it. But anyway, I continued and had a dancing school um, in the community centre in, Gle- in uh, Mulgoa. And uh, we sold that home now and we like kind of s- – I'm semi-retired and um, – Guy's still working and we've moved uh, to Dremoyne in the whole, in looking forward to moving into our new place in uh, Cronulla. Oh, Yay. beautiful. Close to the ocean. La, la, beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Love looking that. forward to that. So yeah. hopefully that should be ready in May. Hopefully. Hopefully. Keep getting yeah. pushed back. God, I spoke a lot. Sorry, I didn't even no. give you time to question. This is about <laughs> no, you. No, it's about you. <laughs> so what, so um, yeah, the questions. girls, what are the girls doing now? Oh, okay, so... 
two of my daughters um, have babies. Yep. Uh, Dana got married um, to a fabulous guy, Adam. <laughs> Shout out Adam. Gorgeous Shout out. Adam Bina. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a beautiful baby, um, Romeo. That was Adam's name because I think it's after a soccer player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> Romeo's 10 months old. Gorgeous. Oh, so but he's my second grandchild. So Cherie had a little baby with her fiancé, um, Jeremy, and what a gorgeous little girl. Oh, she's now two years of age. <laughs> they are going to get married in um, June. So we're going to Fiji for a beautiful oh, Fiji beautiful. wedding. Where are you going? We leave the 27th, 26th oh, or 27th. I've got a wedding there a week before. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fiji, yeah, the week before. That's so funny. A so couple looking, days before. Looking beautiful. forward to How it. nice. Can't wait. Cherie's all excited too. I bet too. she is. And Cherie's asked me to be her maid of honour. Oh. Not just a mum. I I'm love thinking, that. Oh, not just, but mum is amazing. Yeah. To be a mum, it's I honestly never put ourselves down. <laughs> Mums are hard work. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and so our sisters will be uh, bridesmaids. And, yeah. and then uh, so Cherie's into the uh, fitness industry. She teaches Pilates. She teaches um, um, something other uh, which now has come to an end. Uh, a ballet bar. Oh, it's not ballet bar. Oh, she's going to kill me for not remembering. But I'll come <laughs> back to that. And, um, she was a cheerleader? She's a cheerleader yes, for Manly. Yes, she cheerleads yes. for she? Manly. Yes. yes. You should she, see her. Yeah. yeah right. She cheerleads for Manly. Uh, she also cheerleads for uh, Eels um, when Monique took over uh, um, coaching at the Eels for uh, cheerleading. And um, uh, yeah, so she's uh, fitness, fabulous ballet dancer, mm -hmm. fabulous. So she, she did travel. She traveled and she um, did a lot of showgirl show, uh, show stuff in Europe mm -hmm. and also um, in America, in the USA. How old is uh, she? Cherie's 29. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 1985. What? 1995? 95. 95. Yeah. 95. Oh, Johnny was 1985. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> 1995. 1995, yeah. yeah. So she loved dancing uh, abroad. Oh, yeah. it was her passion. And then uh, Dana, getting back to Dana with her gorgeous 10-month-old, she's a, a da um, PDHBE and a dance teacher at uh, Mitchell High. Yeah, so they all love the dancing. Oh, they carried it with them through their lives. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So that. Nana, Sybil, my yeah. mum, <laughs> thank you to her. <laughs> Amazing woman in dance, really. And then, of course, Carly. Carly also um, enjoyed dance, but it's not really her forte. So mm -hmm. she went on and did a double degree in um, – she majored in Japanese and so she teaches English as a second language. Uh, she yeah, right. travelled to Japan um, and taught there for a, for about eight months, I think, before yeah. COVID set in and she came back mm -hmm. and um, – didn't want to continue in that path, and she's gone into hospitality. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, a, so, that's different. That's isn't it? very different, but she much prefers that now, yeah. and she's doing well. Um, and then I have my daughter, the youngest one, Bria, who uh, obviously studied um, filming and arts at um, Macquarie University. Mm -hmm. She finished her degree last year and is now um, got, she's gone back to uni to get her master's. Good in Anna. business. How old is Bria now? Bria is 23. Yeah, she's 20 she, older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And she has a gorgeous boyfriend too, Harrison. Oh, but not leave out my my Cherie because I love Jem, her Jem. <laughs> like Cherie found her Jem, literally. <laughs> He's a lovely guy, Jeremy. Yep, so um, they've got lovely, you know, partners. Dana's married, Cherie's going to. Bria's going out still and... Um, Carly, she's not like she said. Oh, mom, if it happens, it happens. If yeah. it's not, she's fine <laughs> with that. How old Carly? Carly would be thirty. She's ninety-one, so she'd be thirty-one. Yeah, thirty. I'm not good at math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not oh, <laughs> forget it. Not that. That's yeah. my forte. And um, yeah, so beautiful, beautiful I love that. daughters. Beautiful. And wow, do, you know, honestly, when daughters grow up, 
they look after their mama. <laughs> oh, they look I after. I know it's so oh. true. My partner is um, one of three boys, and I'm like, I feel like I need to give his mum like that daughterly <laughs> affection. <laughs> you boys just don't. Don't nah, do it. They don't. They, they don't. don't. <gasps> they don't have the same like um, thought. No. Yeah, it's true. Things. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. I look at my own husband and poor me. Like I think, <laughs> like he, he does call his mum regularly. They live in Queensland. Yeah. Like, all of Guy's family lives in Queensland. And uh, but he does call his mother regularly. But I just feel like I'm always like, oh, I'm making sure mum's okay. And mm. they, my girls, oh, I'm not left short of anything. <laughs> always included. And I feel oh, one day when I'm older, and then you've got your daughters, I'm gonna feel very lost. <laughs> no, no, no. It's very I'll important to you. no. It's very important also to uh, to let go, and yeah. and that's the big thing out of um, what's happened with me. It's not holding on to. Um, you know, things that can weigh you down and bring you so down into the depths of despair that you don't know how to get out. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness I I don't know if it's because I'm such a extroverted person that I always love to talk. Mm-hmm. And I learned with the incident that with my tragedy that's happened is to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't um bottle it up. Yeah, and you can't walk around with this baggage. Mm-mm. You can, my motto was, I'm either going to sink here or I'm going to swim. What do I want to do? Mm-hmm. And to swim was the only answer. Mm-hmm. I was pregnant. I was given this life. How can I not fulfill this life? You know, I was given two extra beautiful daughters from another mother to raise and continue to do the motherly kind of job here on earth. And I'm loving it. I was then given privilege to have another baby. Oh, come on. You know, there is goodness there. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's so much. The tragedy, like I know people always think, how did you manage to get mm. through it? We do. We do. We do get through it. When you're in the situation, you are, you learn. That, mm-hmm. that's, that's only us. What did you feel like was a pivotal point in your journey to feeling better? When you When did you start to feel like, okay, I think I need to either focus on the positives here. Or like, you know, that sink yeah. or swim moment. Yeah. Did you have a moment where you felt like, okay, obviously you felt grief and, yeah. and all yeah. of that. When, yeah. from that point, how did you um, then change your perspective to say, okay, I'm either going to sink or I'm going to yeah. swim? Yeah. What, 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 where, what did that feel like and when do you feel like that came So through? it's going to start when I didn't know I was pregnant, mm-hmm. okay? God forbid me for saying this, but I thought that like, there's nothing to live for. Mm-hmm. So we actually planned in taking our lives, mm-hmm. both my late husband and I. Mm-hmm. And then maybe, I think it was two days later, I felt this amazing like flutter in my tummy. It was unreal. I was like, could I be pregnant? And then I went to the to a, the, the, the uh, my family doctor and found out yes I am pregnant. So to get that life, that was the first time I felt I can't sink here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I wasn't really like ready to move or go on, but I knew this no, this is this is life. Mm-hmm. I'm dealing with the most beautiful life that now has been given to me, mm-hmm. and that I can bring into this world. Mm -hmm. So I need to do the right thing as a mother. And then, of course, I think the next moment was seeing Cherie, Mm -hmm. seeing that beautiful face. And like I said, I saw these three in, the three in one, if I can say that, her dad and her two uh, brother and sister. And that just gave me a little bit more that, okay, life is life is to be lived mm. there's there's a little bit more i didn't even i didn't ever think of a relationship of any kind or anything i just knew it was my daughter and i mm-hmm. and i know that my parents had my back my brother my younger brother my older brother he was in south africa at the time he's now living in hong kong i knew they were always there for me and then my extended family and friends and the beautiful people from the community of our church. 
Um, and the next would have been, so you, you see, there wasn't just one pivotal moment. Yeah. It was a buildup of many little yeah. parts that you needed to give yourself this opportunity to see and to, to feel mm -hmm. and to, see, to meet Guy mm -hmm. and these two gorgeous little girls. You know, and I was thinking, wow, you know, when he asked me that, oh, I'm going to be their mom, I'm going to be able to do the best I can for them here uh, with my little girl. And then, of course, my Bria was like, and, and I don't know, it's just the relationship Guy and I have mm -hmm. that just makes it feel like they, <sighs> good things can come out of tragedy. Mm -hmm. Good things can come out of very controversial mm -hmm. circumstances, right? And um, and it's maybe knowing the respect of it, respecting each other, mm -hmm. respecting um, love. Love is so important. I've always been a, a big thing on love way before my children passed away already. It's just, I, it's so nice to give. And I don't mean love in the way of effect of loving your partner, your, you know, it's just being that loving person, mm -hmm. smiling, making people feel like they part or, you know, I try not to honestly to be um, a downer. Like I don't want to be negative. I know I can't walk around smiling every day. No, that's not, no, that's no not the, can. but it's just part of my personality. Yeah. You bring in, you've got such a, you radiate such a positive vibration. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah. that. It is just and it and it, <laughs> and it attracts more positive things to you. It does. Yeah. And it's and it's and it's hard because some people in your position would say, "Oh, I just wouldn't be able to cope," mm -hmm. or they'd hate the world, or you know, um, even just bringing it down to small things like I've had a bad day with my partner. I don't know. Say yeah. for example, when they come into um, a public environment and yeah. then treat the waiter like shit. It's mm -hmm. like. People do that every day, oh. and it's and it's and it's like that taking it out on everyone else, yeah. and yeah. taking it out on everyone else. That you, and it's about you're saying you're bringing that positive yeah. energy, and you're attracting more positivity to you. Absolutely, uh, it's it. Yeah, I, I just I, I think, and it even goes way back before that too. I looked at it because when you're born in a in a in a in a country where your color of your skin determined yeah. your life, your li yeah. who you are, mm -hmm. and you're like. What? No, no. And so, you know, you knew you were better than that. Mm -hmm. I may not be white. I may not be this. What this, the, the the government is making it out to be. But I know who I am. I, I know how you know the goodness in me. I know I can love. I know, and and I think it's from those kind of um, adversities you go through, mm -hmm. huh? All the way that you realize, I don't want to treat someone else. I love that. Like that. Yeah. It's Same. it's. It's it's not. I love that, Deb. That was amazing. Mm. Yeah, uh, you don't. You've been through that, so you're not gonna um, project that, that on other, other people. people. You're gonna actually no. change. It's about that's changing it. the narrative. That's it. And and we, uh, you have the control to that's do it. that. Well, that's one thing we have the control to do yeah. is to change. And and that's the only thing. So you, can you do. don't hold on to like, oh, I'm gonna hate all white people. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes, because yeah. you can't Green. change everyone else. You can only <laughs> you know, change yourself. I'm gonna hate. Uh, uh, no. Yeah. Because life is about change. Yeah, We're moving right. forward. We all want. I love yeah. that. We all want this amazing, like to feel belonging, to feel belong to something or someone, and just to feel uh, a part of, to feel connected. It's. Absolutely. I don't know. That's just. <laughs> oh, I love that. Deb. Thank you, love. Um, I have another question yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. In regards to your daughter Cherie. Yes. How did you navigate telling her about bringing up that her dad had passed or that she did have a dad that wasn't guy? Well, and how siblings did that, happen? that aren't here. Either. Yeah. How yeah. did you how did you navigate that to her without? And what kind of age did you feel yeah. it was um, appropriate? I always believed I was going to be honest from the word go. Okay, she needed to know exactly the truth. Now, was it too young? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, like I said, I went for counselling. Eventually, I went for psychology as well, uh, going for uh, to a psychiatrist, just because I think my headspace in the four years before I met Guy, it, it was like up and down, and I needed to be um, wholesome for my little girl. 
And people think, that, you know, I'm, I was aware of it, but I think I could do with a little bit of professional help. Mm -hmm. So, you know, going for that, I felt, and listening to him, he, like he always said, you know, you just got to be who you are. And I took that away with me and I thought, no matter what, my daughter's going to know the truth. She's going to know from the beginning. So as soon as Cherie could talk, I spoke about her dad. Mm -hmm. I spoke about her brothers and, her brother and sister. We showed photos. Mm -hmm. We shared this. But in saying that, as time went on and she got to know and understand, because Cherie would have been three. So she kind of knew that mm. there was a daddy, but daddy's in heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. My brother and sister's in heaven. But for a three-year-old, I don't know how much. Then she met Guy. So Guy is like her dad. Does she call him dad? Yeah. 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 So it's only as she got on beyond, I'd say, primary school, um, high school when they went to Catalan Chisholm, uh, the question started happening. And... I had to be very honest with Cherie. Like, you know, I, I, I told her exactly, you know, because she wanted to know why, what happened to Dad. Would Dad have gone to jail? Be so I, I explained and I thought by this time she's old enough maybe. However, in hindsight, I think I don't know if I'd do it differently because she did go through a very patchy time mm -hmm. as a teenager. And she always said, my dad didn't wait for me. Why didn't he wait for me? And I can understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, like... <sighs> but she says, I know I love my daddy guy. I couldn't ask for someone better than him. But it's just... So it's that flip-flopping kind of thing mm -hmm. that she had. Mm -hmm. She had, uh, you know, six, 15, 16. She went through quite a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had to let her experience mm -hmm. and go through it. And I know whatever I taught her, whatever I've passed on, whatever I've done for my baby, I know she'll come around. It's mm -hmm. just that she needed to get through. She, I'm not saying she was a bad girl. I'm just saying there's things that she could have done differently. Um, she just went through a wild stage. Mm -hmm. But um, if I can say she done it with... She did it with a bit of class, though. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was like, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not listening to you, mum. Yeah. I'm doing my thing, and off she go, and I just go, whoa, okay, <laughs> that's not a good path, but go for it. <laughs> you learn. Yeah, and with Dana and Carly, always spoke about her, their mum, her mum, Dana and Carly's mum. Um, but then it came to a point where we had to be the family. Mm -hmm where we needed to, you know, like be mum and dad. We couldn't dwell on exactly. what was. But yes, we had to. Mm -hmm. We had to tell the truth. We had to speak up. We had, I was very honest with Sheree, mm -hmm. very honest with Carly and Dana. And then, of course, we had Bria. Mm -hmm. And Bria went through her little moments because she felt like, oh, my goodness, you had a family on this side and you had a family. What if that never happened? I would not have been yeah, here. There was a whole life so before then, yeah. Bria. Yeah. So she also then, it got into her head. Yeah. And, and we had to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So there are things, but will we ever get it right? No. Mm -hmm. So this is why you've got to go with your, your truth, with your heart, with thinking about it too. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. you think that the girls connected going through a loss together? I think they did. Yeah. I think they did. They probably leaned on each other, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. They used to be in their little room and you could hear yeah. them having their little, yeah. you know. And I was thinking, great. Yeah. That's their little healing moments. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Let they've them got go. to go through. Yeah. When yeah. you said that they went through their phases, do you, did you feel like letting them experience that? At first. Um, helped them go through yeah. it instead of. Um, being controlling, yes, yeah. yeah. I had to learn not to be controlling, controlling yeah. because I didn't, oh, you know, as a mom, I don't want my child to experience that. Mm. But in the moment, and thank goodness for Guy too, because he's such a little thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he used to go, "You've got to pull back, yeah, Deb. You can't. You've got to." At first, I used to fight it. I did. I, 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 I you know, I'm not going to deny it. Sheree and I, we'd clash. Dana and I, we'd clash. You know, because no, I don't want you to go through that. Mm. 
little did I know, oh my goodness, these are young adolescents going, trying to find who they are. Mm -hmm. Cherie's trying to find her identity, so is Dana, you know, and Carly and Bria. And I think Bria got the better deal. <laughs> <laughs> she watched all her sisters go through it. <laughs> she saw all the, like, mum getting cranky with the girls. Yes. But no. And yeah. um, I agree with that. I do feel like letting, as, like, a, I don't have children, but when I went through my phases of, yeah. you know, rebellion yep. and all that, yep. my mum was so understanding. And yep. she would just be strict enough but not, not strict to the point where it would make me um, want to do it more. More, yeah. They're going to do it. They'll exactly. just do it behind your back without mm -hmm. you knowing. Absolutely. And so, yeah. You know what? The child is given so much information, yeah. you know, from birth to goodness knows 12, 13, 14. You're not silly. Yes. You've been given so much. They've lived life with you. Yeah. Yes, let them have that experience. They'll come back. Yes, and then those mistakes back. that your parents are trying to prevent you from having, <laughs> those mistakes are the ones that... Do you Make need you, to, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, you need to make if them. I didn't go through all those things, and sometimes I'm like, Oh, I wish I'd, that didn't happen to me, but it honestly wouldn't have made me who Absolutely. I am today. So, so if my mum was sheltering me, I wouldn't be who I am, I'd be mm -hmm. a completely different person. Never I wouldn't to have do had that. those experiences, never to do. have that. Um, it builds resilience, it builds Absolutely. character, yeah. it yeah. does. No, 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 yes. I'm all for that. And I've said, you know, because I had my little controlling moments of them, so I had to apologise. <laughs> and I did. I did. I, they, they needed to hear my apology that I was not, you know, I thought I was doing the right thing because I wanted the best for you, but that is in a controlled manner. Mm -hmm. It n didn't have to be in a controlled way. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that too, you yeah. know, um, when you're a parent actually – teaching your kids that it's okay to say yes. sorry, yes. that it's okay, mm. that you don't always have to be That's in the right. right. And I think that um, then projects later in life when they have their own relationships with their partners and they're like it's okay to say sorry. Yeah. Like it's, you, don't have to, you don't have to be stubborn. Then you see yeah. it can happen between couples. It yeah. will happen with children if yeah. we do that. I think it, it is. It is yeah. so important that we do say sorry. Parents don't have it all. Yeah. It, no manual was put out there for yeah. us to go through. And even then it wouldn't be right. So we make mistakes. We make big ones. Yeah. yeah. So so is a big one. Um, I have another question. Yes. So you and Guy, when you – obviously it wasn't too long after you both had a loss. Mm. How did you navigate going through grief of another partner while also having your love for each other? Was that hard? Did you feel like sometimes – you felt like Guy was um, withdrawn in, in grief when you weren't or was it – how did you both navigate going through that at the same time? That's a very good question because you think about it, I've had four years of getting through mine. Mm -hmm. Guy's would have been six months. But then he said it's been so many years when his late partner was diagnosed with cancer and so it was a – a toing and fro in between, up. yeah, you know, between hospital and home, and not being there, and he had to look after the children, the the the, um, the grandparents having to come and help for him look after them. So, um, for him there was for myself too, but for Guy there was. I could see it, mm -hmm. and because I knew what the feelings like, I would back. I would back off. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love me. It's you know, because sometimes you think about it, this loving the other woman, exactly. you, for goodness mm -hmm. sake. That's what I meant. Yeah. Well, like, it's a it hard thing. Difficult. It's a hard thing. Yeah. However, there were circumstances where maybe friends or family would have interjected and kind of made one feel like you are the other. Like gotten in yeah. the head. Yeah. yeah. And I would then sit with Guy and I'd say, and this is where it was so beautiful. We could communicate. Mm -hmm. I'd say, you think about this. If this was done to you, how would you feel? Mm -hmm. And vice versa. He would do the same with me. And and I think because of what we've been through, we knew to give mm -hmm. space, but we knew where to draw, mm -hmm. to pull on the reins a little bit and to say, look, this is what will be good for us. At the end of the day, we had to think about us. We can respect our late partners. We can respect their mothers and their family but this is where we are now we cannot deny it we cannot you know change it it's who it's what it is and yes we it, it's communicating mm -hmm. 
But yes, there were moments. Yeah. There were moments. Because you think about in any relationship, no matter, and, you know, whether it's alive or the person's passed on, there's still that, you know, you still think, oh. And he had the same feeling. Mm. And that is why I said before I came to, to, you know, to have a chat with you guys, I needed to speak with him. And yeah. the same with my daughters, made, made sure that they, and I know, like I said, 99.9, they would have agreed to say, because we know how much we love each other. We know mm. where we are in life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely, yes, to your question, there were, but yeah. we had to sort it out. Yeah, trying to navigate love. Yeah. Yeah. Love and ah, through grief. Ah. And through new beginnings. Absolutely. And it's and it's nice that um you and God both had that understanding and been through similar things. Because yes. It's, yeah, it's like would it have worked yeah. in another circumstance? It would be very difficult yeah. for someone who hasn't been through That's that. That's right. That's so yeah. true. That's so true. Um what was I gonna say? Yeah, no, but it just it and even the even the girls going through it together. Yes. And that they were both that they were the same. I know that doesn't make much of a difference, but they're, they're the same gender as exactly. well. So they're going yes. through the same hormonal things and they're growing up together. As lo I, mean, I know we don't want to say that, but yes, it's true. Yes. The girls the girls could get with the girls yes. and do it, you yeah. know, and, and just play dolls or take the head off or scream yeah, yeah. or something. <laughs> you know, Have that weird Barbie with yeah, yeah, yeah. the stressed hair and <laughs> drawing on the face. Oh, and poor Bria had to be pushed in the Barbie pushers and they were just all piling her in then. So the things that they could do so that they could also find yeah. their little healing moments. Mm -hmm. of, you know, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who's looking after us, <laughs> but it's been amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. It's Even you were so young when you went through that traumatic incident. You would have been quite young, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I was 30, like 20 29, 30. Mm. Were you? Yeah. 29? 29. Yes, I was 21. John was nine years old. Yep. Yes. So it's yes. about right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's quite yeah. young to go through oh. something so oh. so traumatic. I know, and you don't ever, 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 ever think that could ever happen to you. No, you just don't. No, you don't. No, wow. life can change in an instant. It's scary. <gasps> Never, ever thought of that. I, uh, it's like I would not want this to happen to anyone else. Mm. But in saying that, we have to experience adversities. We have to experience things that are, you know, tragedies that happen in life. Because if we don't, we're just going to be these people walking around aimlessly like, mm. oh, you know. It's these things that build us up, that gives us the resilience, right. that allows us to grow. And yeah. growth. these do show you the yeah. positives. Because yeah. without the negatives but or without I those lows or bad days, no. you wouldn't understand. No. What, like what I wouldn't want, like don't get me wrong, yep, absolutely right. I, w I would never want my children because I don't know what my poor son must have felt at that mm. time. Because, you know, when I think about it, his dad goes, all I could see was his little face peering, you know, out of the because as the, air, the 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 car was like gliding along, and um, and I think I can't understand what must have been in his little face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Poor Terry must have just been playing with a little doll in the back, didn't even notice anything happening, um, and then to send in my young brother to look at my son who was in an accident, like I realized. And look how many years later mm. I'm sitting and thinking about it. Like, wow, Brendan, thank you. What does does did did your brother ever feel a negative way to, uh, towards? Never. Yeah, have you no. spoken to him about it now? Ne years no, later? no, 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 never. No, no. Um, he probably felt like it was something that he could have. Do you feel like? Do you feel like he felt like it was something that he could do at the time to help you? He's never said to me, but I think he's been such an amazing because he's. I have amazing brothers. They are such beautiful brothers. Um, when I say, bro you know, they, they're they very comforting. Mm -hmm. They're very accommodating. Um, and to an extent, because you know, you know, if you're overstepping the line, especially with Brenton, he's a very <laughs> assertive man. <laughs> he's an engineer, so <laughs> he's very, you know. <coughs> and um, But he's never mentioned, never, ever. And he's always like, I love you, Devon. I take my hat off to you. You know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. That's beautiful. So he's never, uh, and uh, I'm sure I would have known. I'm sure you would have told me. Mm -hmm. But maybe not. Didn't mm. maybe want to 
and I feel like yeah, your late husband would have been through. That's oh. you. C- you just can't imagine that, and and you can and you can never make any judgment no. because you've never been what he's been through. Absolutely, you, you just would not know how that feels. After. I know how to love my children. I know how to love him, but I can never ever understand. I'll never be able to come to the slightest understanding. Of what he endured, what he felt, whether it was the right way or wrong way, yeah. and he never had b- any bad no intentions. Intention. In take, no. you know, when you take over a car, you don't it, have no. those intentions. Oh, look, sometimes not. I go like, oh, yeah, we, we, we will do. do. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just don't have those intentions. You do, and yeah. Never, and I bet um, Cherie would have, you know, when she was going through those hard times, yeah. and thinking like, why didn't he say? But you just that feeling would have yeah. just. You, he probably also felt like he didn't um, deserve That's to it. have Cherie. You're so right. He probably felt like he, he said that he it. doesn't deserve this. He doesn't yeah. deserve this life. Is that what he said? He said, I d- he did, yeah. didn't he? He said that he, ne- he never ever... Now, after what's happened, he, he said, I don't deserve living there. Yeah. I don't... Why should I live? Mm-hmm. And they don't. So let me go to them. <laughs> you know, you like kind of... In our pitiful, sorrowful way, because we used to, we lived in this one single bedroom upstairs where mum and them had a three-bedroom townhouse. And so him and I would just be closed up in this little bedroom and we used to have two little love peach face bir- mm. birds. And we used to think that was our John and Terry. <laughs> <laughs> and so we used to just sit and watch them fly across the room. <laughs> That's so cute. And eventually, of course, put them back in the cage. But, yeah, that was... Um, and, and and he he just said you know I've got to go Deb so it's in that kind of mm. you know talking moment where yeah. we're just sharing and we used to share share and share and share mm-hmm. and share yeah it does yeah Deb thank you so much oh. you're amazing you <laughs> have just shown us your story and all your hardships and and it's great that we started off the episode like we did because you are such a positive person mm-hmm. and I think you. so many people can take so much away from this because I feel like I can. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it just shows you that having a positive energy really can change your life. So. Oh, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was so beautiful to sit here with you. Thank you. And to share my story, yeah. my journey, you know. And, and uh, it's hard, It's not easy reliving that moment. No. So I really appreciate I, that. Uh, so. And, yeah, I, like last night I did, I went, and looking, okay, Deb, you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said to Celeste, it's about telling our story. Yeah. We don't know who we are supposed supposed to hear. Yeah. If it even Me. changes one person. Yeah. One Just person. a little bit. Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There's goodness. There's yeah. lots of it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. I love you. Thank you. So much. Thank you everybody for listening. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you. Bye.